please pause the video and take a moment to read this important safety message. Hey, welcome back everybody. Another fun video here at Blue Glow Electronics today. Had a friend bring over a Luxman 441 turntable about a year ago and um, we were trying to figure out if it had a bad motor or a bad control unit in it and um, I tore the unit apart, uh, kind of did some general preventive um, recap the boards, checked all the transistors in it, found one transistor that was a little out of spec so we replaced it and it still didn't solve the turntable issue. So we came to the conclusion it was the um, the motor board. Let me show you that. So you can see here the um, the motor, which is a very heavy duty unit made by Mitsubishi. Um, it's labeled Lux, but the motor itself has a control board built onto it, and you can't buy these separately, nor can you buy them at all at this point. And what's odd is when you find a schematic for this unit. It's for the control board underneath here and not for the motor board. So I had no schematic to go off of on this whatsoever. Um, but at any rate, we came to the conclusion it was either this board and the logic on it or the motor itself because um, the, the other board is actually the power supply board that's underneath here. And it looks like this. Um, it's a power supply board. I was able to validate um, by measuring on the pins here and voltages and there is a schematic available for it and I was able to confirm that the power supply was putting out the right voltages. It's just it wasn't driving the unit. So either the motor or the control board on it was bad. Tested a bunch of transistors on the control board, could not find anything wrong with it. Um, so started thinking it could have been in some of the uh, the logic on this thing as well, or just actually the uh, the board itself was dead, or the motor. So, at any rate, uh, fast forward a year, and my buddy was watching on eBay, and he found um, an entire 441 table that popped up minus the platter. And he was contemplating buying it. Uh, the price on it was a little bit high. He and I talked about maybe he should just email the guy and make an offer um, on it, a lower offer. And he kind of went out there to make the offer, and when he did, the guy had then changed his auction, and he had broken up it into multiple components. So he broke up the table, separate from the driver board, separate from the motor, and my buddy was able to pick up both the power supply and the motor um, at a fairly good price. So he brought it over today, and we just did a direct swap. Um, you could figure out how to do this. There's, um, there's four wires here that go to this and then to the fuse holder that you have to unsolder. Um, and then that's a pretty much a direct swap. And then the motor itself, there's four screws on the top here that you would, um, you would re um, remove and replace to drop this in. And then this is all just plug and play with connectors. So not too bad of a job at doing that. But then we got it done and guess what? It lit up and the turntable started spinning. But we had a challenge with the unit uh, locking on at 33 speed. There's a little light right here and it flashes when it is out of speed. So if it's at 32 RPM or 36 RPM, this little light here will flash. When you get it locked on at 33 and a third, or in this case we've got it locked on at 45 right now, this little light will go off. And the way this works is, um, one second. On the bottom of the motor there's a little um, dust cover that you'll pull off and if you pop it off then you've got two screws you can remove and then you are able to access this unit from the bottom of the turntable and I, it's kind of hard to see but I've got this propped up right now uh, maybe you can see it better here I've got it propped up on three two by fours and then um, I'm just feeding it out of a little portable uh, variac that I've got here uh, because these units run off of 100 volts, and so um, adjust it here to be right on 100 volts. There we go. And so um, basically I've got it propped up. I've got the dust cover loosened on the bottom, and we were able to go underneath and adjust it with just a small little screwdriver, that one of those two potentiometers. And we've got both the 45, as you can see here, locked on. And then if we turn it here, the... Uh, Let's start that again. Should lock on here at 33 and as well. As you 
you can see this light is on right now and it locked over here so if the light is flashing you're not locked on at that point okay um, if it's solid or off um, you're on at that point so at any rate there are some instructions out there if you dig enough online this is a uh, service um, update from April 26, 1978 and it's for the 441 or 444 um, and it'll tell you there's VR1 and VR2 in here and one of them adjust, VR1 adjusts 33 and a third and the VR2 adjusts 45 and then it has a picture that shows you where VR1 and VR2 are, are at and so um, there again you can see them here on the board they look slightly different on the one we replaced they're the little flat wafer type um, but I um, thought I would show you that. I'll show you underneath here if I can how to get to that and adjust it. The bottom line is you just turn, get your Variac on 100 volts exactly um, or your step down transformer, whatever you're using to get it on 100 volts. You, um, we're using just a phone app here on an iPhone that uh, locks on green when you get it set how you want it. And then I'll show you underneath what we had to adjust. Okay, I'm having to go handy camp here, but hopefully you can see I've just got this mounted up on some 2x4s as my brace. Enough that I can get up underneath the unit here. I'm just using a little light wand here to, to have good fit sufficient light here. And as you can see right here is VR2 and on the other side of it right here is VR1. And all I had to do was get in here and adjust this with a small screwdriver. Um, while I'm turning it and then he was standing up top watching the iPhone lock on and when it when it locked on I stopped and then once we adjusted the 33 and got it locked on then we came along and adjusted the uh, 45 anytime I adjust one speed I always try to adjust the other just in case there's any interdependencies between these two but at this point we've got them both locked on at any rate, I'm going to call this video a wrap for today. I really just wanted to show you how simple it would be to replace the motor and the power supply board on one of these. But more so, there's not a lot of info out on, on these Luxman tables at all. So, uh, just showing you how to adjust the speed on one of them. And then when you get done, all you got to do is put that cover back on. Um, you can take your little, uh, little plate that you had to pop off and you put your little super glue and glue it back onto the bottom of your table and you are good to go at that point in time so thanks for watching everybody hope you learned something i know i did today and had fun doing it thanks everybody